Defendants in Henry Tang's illegal basement case acquitted of all charges. A painting just sold for $29 million has gone missing. And two new signals detected in Indian Ocean plane search. Chinese ink painting just sold for nearly $29 million at an auction has gone missing. It's suspected to have been thrown out as garbage along with other refuse collected from a hotel in Wan Chai. The missing ink wash painting titled Snowy Mountain was a 2012 creation by contemporary Chinese painter Tui Ruzuo. Just under four meters long and two meters wide, the painting was auctioned for $28.75 million at the Grand Hyatt two days ago. It was reported missing yesterday and the police initially listed the case as theft. According to police sources, there is security camera footage showing a guard kicking the packaged painting over to a pile of rubbish. Cleaners later took the rubbish out, which was then dumped at the Tunmun landfill. The police have now reclassified the case as lost property. Poly Auction, through which the painting was sold, refused to comment on the case. Snowy Mountain was one of 22 of Tui Ruzuo's works put on sale during the two-day auction. It fetched the second highest price among the 16 pieces of art auctioned off. The highest priced piece by Chui was a scroll painting titled Landscape in Snow, which was sold for $184 million. An auctioneer we spoke to said special experts are usually hired to handle auctioned goods. Our staff will handle this kind of stuff because uh, auction item um, usually with a high value and we not, will not uh, allow other people touching them. Cheng added that the items are also stored in separate categories, such as paintings in one group, frames in another, with specific staff in charge of each item group. Another possible breakthrough in today's search for the missing Malaysia Airlines plane. Search teams scanning the Indian Ocean for black box signals believe they've picked up more underwater pings that they hope belong to flight MH370. Sonia Artero reports. This is day 32 in the search for flight MH370 and its 239 souls on board. Given the standard black box battery shelf life is 30 days, searchers were grateful to hear more underwater pings today. Ocean Shield has now detected four transmissions in the same broad area. Yesterday's signals was, will assist in better defining a reduced and much more manageable search area on the ocean floor. If this is the missing plane, experts insist the longer the pings last, the more time they have to narrow the search before deploying a submarine to chart a potential debris field on the seafloor. We won't deploy any subsurface capability until we have isolated and optimized the location of that particular contact. But pinpointing an exact location will be a monumental task given the ocean depth is about 4,500 meters deep. That's the equivalent of stacking 14 Eiffel Towers on top of each other, making it the deepest search ever recorded in history. The other challenge they face is the audible pings they've recorded span a massive area. There has been variability in the geographic position, which, you know, leads me to uh, be less optimistic than I would be if I could consistently reacquire signal uh, so that I have a night, nice, small geographic area to, to focus the, the autonomous underwater vehicle search on. Inspired by hope, Japan has just scrambled two aircraft equipped with sonar technology to detect underwater signals. The mission uh, which they are going to discharge is to fly into the, the surface uh, of southern Indian Ocean to try to find uh, as much as possible the debris with a number of advanced devices uh, and rate, including radars. The cost of the search so far has reached 44 million U.S. dollars, and yet there's still no evidence to prove the plane even crashed. 
Sonia Artero, TVB News. All three defendants in the trial involving an illegal basement underneath former Chief Secretary for Administration Henry Tang's house in Kowloon Tong have been acquitted of all charges. The Buildings Department will study the judgment and seek advice from the Secretary for Justice before deciding what to do next. Ronnie Samtani reports. After hearing the verdict, the three defendants look relieved as they left Kowloon City Magistracy. Architect Henry Ho and structural engineer Wong Pak Lam said they are satisfied with the court ruling. And a representative of the contractor Hian Lee Engineering Company said they can now move forward. The trial revolved around whether the three defendants were involved in constructing an illegal basement and skylight opening at the home in Kowloon Tong before the building's department issued an occupation permit. Chief Magistrate Clement Lee pointed out that building's department officials had conducted several surprise site inspections. They took 58 photos and were free to check all parts of the home. And so if there were illegal structures being constructed, the inspectors would have noticed the unauthorized building works. Therefore, the court found no objective evidence to prove that the illegal structures were in place before the building's department issued the occupation permit. A total of 14 witnesses, including five expert witnesses, were presented by the prosecution and defense teams during the trial, which lasted more than 20 court dates. However, the court only accepted the testimony from one expert witness on the defense side. Expert Professor Lee Zong Jin found in the house a number of features that were different from the structural plans submitted to the buildings department in 2006, proving that the occupation permit was issued before the unauthorized structures were built. The magistrate found Lee's opinion to be the most comprehensive, logical and reliable. The magistrate said the other expert witnesses failed to indicate when the illegal structures were built, and so their testimonies will not be considered. The magistrate concluded that the construction of the unauthorized structures was carried out at a later date and that the three defendants were not involved. They were acquitted of all charges in the summonses. In response to the ruling, the building's department says it will study the judgment and consult the Department of Justice before deciding on any follow-up actions. Speaking to the media, former Chief Secretary for Administration Henry Tang welcomed the court's ruling. He expressed apologies to the families for the trouble they had to go through and thanked building's department officials for their dedication and responsible judgment in handling the case. Tang's wife, Lisa Kwa, earlier pleaded guilty to a charge of carrying out illegal building works without obtaining prior approval from the building's department and was fined $110,000 last November. Ronnie Santani, TVB News. Elsewhere, Indonesians went to the polls today in a one-day legislative election that's expected to clear the path for the country's next president. The incumbent president, Cecilio Bambang Yuriono, is constitutionally barred from seeking a third term. His ruling Democratic Party has also been marred in a spate of high-profile corruption cases. The frontrunner for president is Jakarta Governor Joko Widodo, known as Jokowi. His Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle has been topping the polls for months. With a population of 240 million, Indonesia is the world's third largest democracy after the U.S. and India. And while it's the world's most populous Muslim nation, the 12 main parties are either secular, nationalists or moderates loosely based on Islam. Oscar Pistorius broke down in sobs and howls while testifying at his murder trial in South Africa Tuesday. The double amputee Olympic sprinter is facing charges of murdering his girlfriend, model and lawyer, Riva Steenkamp. The day began with a subdued Pistorius describing dinner at home and occasional squabbles he would have with Steenkamp. But when the testimony turned to when he actually shot his girlfriend, saying he thought she was an intruder, he began sobbing. Pistoria said he heard the bathroom window open in the middle of the night, and he hurried to get his gun to protect himself and Steenkamp. I wasn't sure if someone was going to come up the ladder and point a firearm in the house and start shooting. So I just stayed where I was, and I kept on screaming. And, um, and then I heard a noise from inside the toilet. Um, what I perceived to be somebody coming out of the toilet. Before I knew it, I'd fired four shots at the door. With Steenkamp's mother looking on steely-eyed, Pistoria said it was at that point that it dawned on him it might be Riva inside the bathroom. I flung the door open, I threw it open, 
and I sat over Reva and I cried. And um, I don't know, I don't know how long. <coughs> I don't know how long I was there for. <laughs> she wasn't breathing. I think we'll take an adjournment. What will you do? <laughs> <laughs> It's the first time South Africa has televised a court case, and it has some media debating over how to cover it. Where was it going to be placed? Was it more of a tabloid story, important only because of the celebrity of the people involved and the salacious nature of the material? Or was it a story that maybe talked about broader issues, the, the, the question of whether or not the trial itself, which is being televised, the first one ever in South Africa, is a referendum on this country's ability to even deal with an epidemic of violence against women. Well, some might question the, 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 the good taste of, of showing a, 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 the courts in action on this particular uh, uh, occasion. I think that it's good for the future. I think uh, accountability and open justice is very important, particularly for a new democracy like South Africa. The trial is expected to last at least three weeks. Alan Brookniet, TVB News. Ukraine's interior minister says the unrest in the country's eastern region will be resolved in the next 48 hours, either by negotiations or by force. Arsen Avakov made the remarks as ethnic Russian uprisings continue and protesters demand closer ties with Moscow. The Luhansk Security Services building is among several government offices seized by pro-Moscow groups in an escalation of hostility towards the interim Ukrainian government. In a plea for help to Russian President Vladimir Putin today, a protest leader named Vitaly told supporters this was their last chance. In Donetsk, a similar scene is playing out as demonstrators occupy a government building for a third day. Hostilities have also spiked in Ukraine's parliament. Punches were thrown when the head of the Communist Party accused nationalist members of playing into Russia's hands by helping to destabilize Ukraine with the protests. Meanwhile, today, Ukraine's interior minister suggested something between a political option and a forceful option may soon resolve the situation in eastern Ukraine. Arsen Avakov said talks have been proposed for those who want dialogue. But for the minority who want conflict, he said there will be a forceful answer from the Ukrainian authorities. Ukraine is not a member of NATO and the alliance is unlikely to come to Ukraine's military aid if Russia invades. So far, sanctions have been the only option used. During a U.S. Senate hearing on Tuesday, lawmakers demanded to know why the U.S. won't give Ukrainians defensive weapons. My hero, Teddy Roosevelt, used to say, talk softly but carry a big stick. What you're doing is talking strongly and carrying a very small stick. In fact, a twig. Your friend Teddy Roosevelt also said that the credit belongs to the people who are in the arena who are trying to get things done. And we're trying to get something done. And you want to dump it on me? I may fail. I don't care. It's worth doing. It's worth the effort. Kerry will be among the diplomats attending a ministerial level meeting next week in Europe that will also include Russia, Ukraine and the European Union in another attempt to defuse the conflict. And still ahead tonight. Government plans for an innovation and technology bureau. Carrie Lam says close examination of 18 academics reform proposal needed and questions over the acceptance of new students at a Tinshire White Kindergarten.